uh, I'm going to go ahead and call the meeting to order at 11.06 a.m. and make that note in the minutes. Um, as I said, my name is Joe Carvalho. I'm the new co-chair of this committee. Um, I'm joined by Princess, my fellow co-chair, and someone who I hope will help guide us through today's meeting. As this is my <laughs> first meeting as co-chair. Um, Princess, if yeah. you don't mind, uh, could I hand it over to you just for the first agenda item or so? Oh yes, no problem. So on the agenda on the agenda today, um, we're going to be talking about. Um, some new things that are happening, um, getting some updates um, as to what's taken place so far with the uh, other committees too, just so that we're on board with that um, and aware. We're also going to be um, pre uh, just kind of going through um, some talks about the presentations that have occurred um, and uh, Peter is actually going to give us the update. So we'll wait for Peter to come to talk about that. So um, uh, and I'm here. Well, <laughs> Hello, Peter. Good morning. Hi, Peter Mason. How are you? Right on time. Oh, it's a busy morning. <laughs> I know, I know. So, um, Princess here, we're, we were talking about, um, we're just going through the agenda. Uh, initially, Joe introduced himself and um, just going through agenda about just to let folks know what we're going to be talking about today. and. Um, letting them know you were going to provide us with some updates on ARPA overall, kind of where what's been happening, what's going on, what's to come. Are you passing it on to me? I'm passing it on to you. That's me <laughs> passing it on to you. <laughs> All right. Uh, good morning, everybody. Um, it's been an interesting morning. I started my day off talking to our human rights committees and uh, the role of censors in um and how human rights treats that um and you know looking at uh if an individual has a sensor on their bed to determine whether they're having a seizure um how that's less intrusive than to have a staff sitting at the door watching the individual to make sure they don't have a seizure and you know whether you need to look at you know what what role human rights has in terms of some of the audio and video and video technology so it was an interesting conversation we had um and i went from there to our uh consultant that we have for our transformational process and so we're working through that so uh but i'm here to give you uh, an update of where we're at all together so i gotta pull my this so i can see my notes because my memory is shot. Um, so the uh, the ARPA initiative is is it's broad. Uh, we always are talking about the transformational piece of it um, with uh, providers and individuals moving to more independent settings, but there's a broader re piece to this. And so I'm going to give you uh, an update of the whole initiative. Um, so one of the things that we have uh, as part of this is um, during the pandemic, a lot of providers had issues in terms of uh, fiscal stability. And so some of the, the money that we have has been, we've been providing payments to providers to assist them with their fiscal, um, their financial uh, stability. Uh, we've also uh, been giving money to providers for enhancing the workforce. As everybody's probably heard, uh, there's a staffing crisis out there. Um, so we've been uh, issuing payments to providers to allow them to uh, provide bonuses and longevity payments um, to uh, encourage people to come and encourage people to stay. And the last piece of funding we've been giving providers is to help them with their infrastructure and in and their IT um, infrastructure uh, to help them to try to modernize their systems. Um, so we've given out, uh, we gave out one payment to the providers um, in March and in September we just gave them the second payment. Um, another piece to this is our 
AT uh, assistive technology expansion. So um, we're really, uh, the department is really moving forward in terms of uh, utilizing assistive technology to assist individuals in terms of independence. Um, thus my uh, conversation this morning with the human rights. Um, one of the things we're looking at is we did a RFP uh, notice, actually a notice of opportunity earlier this year uh, for providers and for individuals um, to, if they uh, were looking to increase the use of assistive technology. And we uh, gave out, I think, somewhere around $600,000 worth of um, uh, 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 equipment. Um, we'll look like, and it was very. Once again, so if people are looking at um, individuals who could utilize assistive technology, um, this is a good way of uh, being able to use that, uh, use money uh, from these grants to purchase that. We're looking at doing an, a request for proposals for um, an agency that will come in that will we'll be able to uh, have do assessments for individuals on what they what would be beneficial for them in terms of assistive technology. Um, right now we have a number of agencies that are out there, um, but when a case manager goes to find that, they have to find which agency is available, you know, who who can do this. Um, so what we're trying to do is to uh, have a, a set agency that um, case managers can go to and say, OK, I need this assessment and to try to do it within a, a time frame uh, that uh, makes this thing much more easier to do. Um, the, once the assessment's done uh, they, and the additional equipment's needed, they would then go to Pratt. Once Pratt gives approval, go back to that same agency who would then purchase the equipment and uh, help set up the equipment and train uh, individuals in it. So um, right now we're waiting for that to get um, approved uh, through the various channels. Um, we'll hopefully we'll get that out um, within the next month or two. Uh, we're looking at increasing the training and certifications of our staff and for provider staff. And so we're uh, going to be issuing uh, notices to uh, DDS public and uh, private agency staff uh, that uh, we, they can uh, request uh, funding for them to get additional training and certification and um, assistive technology. We're looking at uh, enhancing self-direction. Uh, we had an old uh, network uh, that um, individuals who self-direct could go on and try to find staff. Uh, it was very um, not very user-friendly and not very comprehensive. Uh, so we have it, we issued a request for proposal. Uh, fortunately, the same company that we have is going to upgrade their system um, and uh, that should uh, all start happening uh, November 1st. We're looking at a longer term solution where uh, we're going to increase our number of people using the system. So the system would be designed to have uh, individual and families who need staff, they would be able to advertise uh, staff that want to do this work would be able to post their job uh, resumes and it would be able to then do a match to say, OK, these have the times and the skills needed for individuals. And then it would be up to the families to uh, go out there and interview those individuals. Uh, we're looking at combining that with the self self direction uh, individuals that uh, work with Department of Social Services um, and to make it a larger database. And um, the, the other piece to this that we're looking at is to somehow come up with a emergency backup staffing piece to that. 
Um, and so that if a family gets really stuck, they would know that they'd be able to go to this website and there would be people who are uh, have all the certifications and training. They may not know the individual um, and that's one of the pieces that we're trying to work through how that would work out. Um, but they would have to they'd be able to uh, work with the staff uh, on an emergency basis. We're looking at uh, expanding supportive housing. Uh, supportive housing is a model that uh, the department is really excited about, and it's been a growing model for us. And what that is, is individuals have uh, live in their own apartment in an apartment complex. Uh, a provider is uh, chosen who then has an office within that complex and is able to support those individuals within that complex. Uh, we are excited about this model because it, uh, individuals are part of the community of that complex. The provider is does uh, activities and trainings that they allow other people, not just uh, the individuals, but um, individuals in the complex. So if it's something regarding safety in the apartment, um, or it's a community activity, um, they'll try to do that in order to make sure that the individuals become part of that complex community. Um, so we're looking at uh, doing additional trainings to, for providers on what this looks like, and we're trying to look at doing uh, a request for proposal to uh, set up additional supported employment sites, supportive housing sites. Um, one of the areas we're looking at is our universal assessment. Uh, we there's a universal assessment out there uh, that's being used by the Department of Social Services. Uh, DDS uses the level of need, the lawn tool, um, and the, the the universal assessment was basically um, created off of the lawn tool, but it's become a real um, more comprehensive assessment. And uh, so there's this is all part of um, trying to have um, no wrong door policy where somebody can go to any place and be able to um, uh, who needs supports. So they could go to any department and be able to be um, processed and then directed to the right place. Um, so the universal assessment is a much larger tool than our lawn tool. And so we're working through how this would work at DDS. And uh, as you know, we have money that's appropriated through our lawn. We'd have to then look at how that would get appropriate using the universal assessment. Um, and so there's a couple of pieces we're doing that. Uh, we had our case managers have gone through the tool and we have, uh, we're, working with Yukon uh, to help us look at an analysis of um, what recommendations we should make in terms of do we move forward? If we do, this is what needs to be done. Um, we have a national core indicator survey we do every year. Uh, what that does is gives us an idea of um, individuals' opinions on their supports and um, we have been doing that through our to our staff, um, you know, we managers and case managers. And what, what we found is that it's always been difficult for us to um, get them all completed that we need to. Um, so what we're looking at doing is contracting this out and um, having it be done by, uh, and we've already done through this process, it will be done through UConn, and that will be done on a yearly basis. Indi we'll still have some case managers and some managers doing it, but most of it will get done by the um, UConn. This will be much more consistent for us, and it will be able to give us much more analysis uh, that we'll be able to use. Um, so that should start for the next year, I believe. We're also looking at um, developing a case, uh, looking for a case management system, uh, a, a software system that would be much more 
uh, uh, um, modernized. Uh, our system now is probably about 20 years old. Uh, it's not very flexible, and so uh, we're looking at um, uh, looking for a system that is out there that will help us to modernize our case management. Uh, the idea is that this would be electronic so that families and providers would be able to log into the system and see uh, the information on uh, their um, son or daughter or for uh, a provider would be able to see all their individuals that they have. Um, and uh, so we're looking at this being uh, worked through with our um, with DSS and uh, the timeline is hopefully we'll get through uh, a process that allows us to hire consultants to go out and do the research and somewhere next year to look at uh, um, assigning this to a developer and then implementing this uh, over the next couple of years. And then we have our critical incident um, program. Uh, we call it Pulse Light. And for those that don't know, Pulse Light is a system that allows us to tap into Medicaid claims. And why that's important is what we found is that um, sometimes individuals get go into a hospital and have a significant uh, illness or injury that we're not aware of. And um, we call these critical incidents. Um, so somebody may get hit on the head, uh, somebody uh, may have a major surgery, and we're not aware of this. Um, because they, they may live uh, in a in their own apartment uh, and the provider didn't let us know they may live in their uh, the, they may live in their own home um, but there's been history of abuse um, so this kind of will allow us to review all those to determine uh, was there a critical incident and if so uh, what what role did, uh, the agency play, um, it, was it abuse and neglect, and we'd be able to do, um, uh, would be able to do investigations based on, you know, the information we have. You know, most times there's already a critical incident form that's been filled out so that they match, but every now and then there's something that comes through that we don't know about. Um, and so this will help us to make sure that we are consistent and to keep the um, uh, tabs on individuals uh, who start living you know, in the community and on their own and um, have a little bit more independence and so to make sure that we're following for the health and safety. And last a piece of this is our whole transformational initiative. And we have hired um, Deloitte Consulting uh, they're coming in and they're going to be assessing our current system, both residential and day. Um, looking at um, what other states have out there in terms of supports. Uh, the idea here is we're going to be looking at individuals who are um, right now in a congregate, either a congregate residential or congregate day setting. So that would be like a community living arrangement, a CLA or what we call a CRS, a community residential supports. Um, and they're basically group homes. And we'll be looking at individuals who are in a day support option, which is a congregate day facility. And our idea is to try to look and move individuals into more independent and alternative settings. And uh, so what Deloitte will be doing is uh, establishing, um, uh, they'll be researching how other states and programs they have to see if we've missed anything. And uh, we'll be uh, getting recommendations from them. And what we've done is we've established um, some incentives uh, to uh, encourage providers to start moving in this direction. And uh, so we've done this. We're now going into two phases. So the initial phase, which will start sometime in November, 
uh, will uh, allow providers who voluntarily want to come forward and work within our current system. Um, and they would then um, work with us in terms of either uh, downsizing a group home, reducing or closing a group home, or uh, you taking that group home and restructuring it so it can provide supports to individuals who have greater um, medical or clinical supports. And we've set up some uh, interim incentives um, to help uh, assist the providers with that. Uh, we've got we have um, a document now that's in draft form that will describe all the ins and outs of the pro of uh, the process. Uh, some of the things we're still working on are uh, like the how the, the region's approval process. We're looking at what the trans transformational plans look like um, and um, and we're have a now right now a template in terms of a, a draft template from Deloitte uh, of how what providers would do in terms of um, uh, how to fill out the form. And let's see, we've um, we're working with our residential and uh, we're residential and our day and our um, individual and family committees um, that are looking at uh, issues that are systemic um, that may interfere with people moving out. Um, so we're developing that list. Um, we're, we've just hired a consultant for communications, um, which will help this committee and the individual and family committee to help uh, explain this to everybody. Um, and I think that's all for now. I think that's the update. Oh, Whoa. that's quite an update. <laughs> <laughs> but a lot of great things happening um, in really all aspects of the department, which is which kind of widens the scope a little bit to how this is really going to impact um, how we provide services to folks across the board. Um, just in case management with providers for families, and it's 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 a huge collaboration uh, effort uh, too, as it sounds. So um, we appreciate that update, um, Peter. Yeah, um, this is Peter Mason. I mean, one of the one of the um, one of the goals for the do the, the funding was to look at transformational items and. So when we were going through developing this um, uh, about a year ago, year and a half ago, it was like, what, what could we do that would really transform the system? You know, when you look at our case management system, it's very, very, um, it, it's worked for us, but it's, it's very restrictive and it's, you know, it's still only internal. So we need to move forward in our in the world and get electronic. So if somebody wants to know what the IP is for their son or daughter, they can go on and say, oh, what is it? I forgot what it is. Um, and uh, if a provider wants to pull out all their authorizations, they'll be able to do this. So we're trying to do it so that it's not just um, where people live, but also the back end of it is how we uh, how we structure the department going forward so that we try to catch up to where uh, the rest of the world is in terms of uh, moving uh, towards electronic uh, paper and stuff. Um, that's really exciting. I think that's something our department has been talking about um, and really, really examining for quite a bit, for quite a long time. Um, as well, and it's it's not new. We've had we've tried other avenues and looked at. We've been researching this for quite a while, so this is it's nice to kind of see that we're actually um, moving this along, um, and folks are on board. It'd be nice to have uh, providers and and families be able to have access at to some level, you know. Whereas where where it's also creating less work um, for everyone. Whereas we're receiving information and having to input information several times, and it's just I can see how it's going to lean things out too um, as well, which is another 
initiative uh, we had in DDS too that really helped out a lot of processes. I don't know if we were looking at uh, lean at all, but that was really a tremendous um, project, I think, for case management that really kind of streamlined how we did things too as well. So, and this- Well, this, this is fair, Mason. One of, the, one of the things we're looking at is trying to combine our authorization system with our case management system. And so what we mean by that is if you put on the individual plan that uh, an individual is going to work in a GSE for five hours at this particular agency, that then our, our idea, well, hopefully it will come through, but the idea is it gets put there and then it flows through the system and, all this, and it makes the authorization. Like right now, it has to go to resource management to do the authorization. This would just flow right through the individual plan. So, I mean, there's things that we're trying to do that will um, help move the system. Oh, that's amazing. It really is a very, 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 very necessary change, impactful change. Does anybody have any questions for any of the updates that Peter um, discussed? It was quite a bit. I just want to put it out there to see if anyone had any questions or any feedback, comments. Yes, this is Wayne Seidel. I do have some comments um, just about the I just I, I have to remind myself of what the focus of this committee is and um, I, I, if you could correct me if I'm wrong in how I'm stating this, but really our goal is to for all of those individual um, initiatives that are happening and they'll happen at different speeds, different paces, and different steps along the way, you know, we are to look at how to engage our stakeholders, including internal DDS staff, and then also how to disseminate information about progress of all of those separate and individual ARPA initiatives. Did I state that correctly? Okay. So, okay. So I'll, I'll yes. So. We're strat so now we strategize as to how to do that. Yes, uh, and uh, before we move on, I just want to make sure no one else has any other questions or comments about anything that Peter discussed. Um, actually, I, I think that that actually leads uh, to uh, the first agenda item, which I had omitted, um, but that Peter had actually touched upon is that uh, we'll be working with um, the communication consultant that has been hired, uh, the McDowell Group. Um, believe that's their name, um, but we'll, this committee will be working with them as we proceed through this process to um, evaluate how uh, updates are currently being communicated with the department and how we can improve and streamline these updates, um, including all of these um, incredible changes that are happening throughout our uh, service delivery system. Um, so I just wanted to touch on that uh, briefly. Um, that said, uh, the next item on our agenda is the uh, recorded incentive uh, presentations um, for, uh, done by the individual and family committee. Um, so over the past, I believe, two meetings, the individual family transformational uh, engagement committee um, has had presentations done um, and we had sent those uh, to you by email yesterday. Um, but I believe it's our hope that uh, between now and our next meeting in uh, mid-November that the committee members here um, review the presentations uh, with the hope that um, if we have questions uh, for people who presented to the individual and family engagement committee, um, that maybe we can have those presenters come and speak to us in this committee to better inform our mission. Um, so um, that said, Princess, I'd love to open it up to you. Um, for you to kind of uh, perhaps give your perspective on that agenda item as um, I'm relatively new to this group. Okay, no problem. Yeah, and so um, this uh, consultant is also gonna be working with the other, co other committees as well. So they'll be informed as to what um, updates and you know uh, things that are in developments are coming out of those committees too as well. So they're gonna be working with um, ARPA really pretty much across the board. And um, as you said, Joe, they'll help to inform how we're going to be strategizing and, and messaging and um, help us to better understand the best ways to put 
um, the information out there to DDS internally, um, all staff is how we're going to be um, getting this message out. You know, we discussed that yesterday too, just to make sure. Um, so they are um, hired. I believe there there's a little bit of a process first. We are going. It's to be determined as to when they're going to be um, starting. Is that correct, Peter? Yeah, this is Peter Mason. Yeah, we're we're working on the scope of work with them right now. Um, and uh, we have a meeting with tomorrow. Hopefully we can wrap that up and then um, once that's done, then we can start moving forward. Um, I, I do want to just give a preference. You know, one of the reasons this committee was uh, put together uh, and it's the same that was put together in terms of the individual family was um, the department has done initiatives in the past and um, We've not done a good job in terms of keeping everybody in the loop of everything that's happening. And um, it causes, especially for staff, frustration, not knowing what's happening. They hear stuff from uh, providers that they didn't know about. So this, uh, the idea here was to keep our staff uh, in the loop uh, so that they know what's going on. And that sounds like an easy task, but it's not. Um, and trying to use the the survey that was done in terms of how people get their information, uh, how do we get this information out? Um, you know, obviously, what I just you know the, the, what I just said um, is a lot. And if we had sent that out to staff, they'd probably be gone after the first line. Um, so it's like, you know, how do we, what is the, the format we need to put this out? Um, as Wayne said, you know, that each of these initiatives will be coming in at different times. Um, and so that, you know, um, the universal assessment is important uh, for uh, the case managers to know uh, because uh, that's a different kind of assessment tool. Uh, the length of it is it's very lengthy um, and, um, you know, we want to make sure that it meets all the needs that we have um, and isn't uh, overly burdensome. Um, but that then also translates into funding, um, so we have to make sure that that's the case. Well, that's a big piece for case managers, um, as is the case management. Um, program or the software we're looking at. Um, but when you're looking at the transformational piece and you're looking at um, if a provider is going to downsize the number of group homes, so they're going to consolidate what they have and they're going to downsize it. Um, you know, that that's a that's a major issue that a lot of people need to know about um, because that's the direction that the department's going. So, um, you know, this 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 committee here is to help structure how that stuff gets out and whether it's on a um, a daily, weekly, monthly, quarterly, however it's done um, in a fashion that hits all the various stakeholders um, of the department. Um, and as I said, the individual and family engagement will be doing that in terms of the families. Uh, this is for the DDS piece to it. Uh, this is Princess DDS. We're we're actually also going to be collaborating with um, Kevin Bronson, who was our was our my previous co-chair, uh, and him being our director of communications director as well. So a lot of this, um, a lot of the information we're going to be putting out is similar information, um, and so he's going to be collaborating with us on that. Um, and we're going to be talking about you know once we. Now that we have this update, one of the, one of our tasks is to make sure that we, just like Peter said, keep um, our DDS staff, internal staff, updated on all this progress too as well. And so um, this information, these updates that we just got from Peter, we'll be working together to um, determine how we put that these updates out um, to get that to people so that they, to our staff, so that they know they're aware of what's going on also. There's a lot going on. It's a lot of moving pieces happening simultaneously at the same time. Um, we need folks to understand um, how, you know, 
you know, what works together, like the lawn is going to be working with the transformational piece because that has to do with uh, understand identifying individuals' needs, and it's also attached with um, attached to how we allocate funding for the individual based on their services and supports and what they need, right? So um, those types of things, the new case management database, all these things that Peter Peter listed. Now our task is to put some information together to get it out to uh, our staff so that they're aware of what's going on. We're hoping to do that. Um, but in between our next meeting. So um, we, I'm gonna talk with, uh, we're gonna meet up with uh, Kevin Bronson to bring him up to speed on this too, to get some ideas on, on that too as well. But we welcome, we wanted to put it out as well um, for us to start discussing how to go about doing this. That was on there, let's see. And also one of the other things that uh, we have on the agenda is the draft day and residential um, uh, incentives. They are finalized and we're going to see if we can get a copy of that for um, our committee to take a look at and review um, so that you, uh, we're informed as to what is um, uh, what those incentives look like. Uh, and I don't believe we have that yet, right, Peter? I think we have the rest. I, 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 well, I sent that to you earlier today. Oh, you did? Okay. Yeah. Yep. All right. So we'll get that out to, to the committee as well. Just wanted to put that on there. Do you have anything to add about the um, the day and residential residential incentives at all, Peter? Just as a note. Uh, we'll, we'll yeah, so this is, this, yeah, this is Peter Mason. Um, so what we what we've done is that um, since we're now doing this in two phases, originally our original plan, we were going to do it all at the same time. Um, but at this point, it makes sense to really split this in half. Uh, so we have phase one and phase two. So the first phase, we have these interim incentives that have been finalized by the day and res committees. Um, and what they are essentially is that uh, as individuals move out of a congregate setting, um, they'll uh, be able to, the, the provider will receive um, funding in order to keep uh, the current setting fiscally stable. So, for example, if there's, <coughs> excuse me, if there's a, um, a provider is looking at a group home of four, and let's say right now they have a vacancy uh, in that house. So there's three people. Um, so they want to um, consolidate. They have an opening someplace. They're gonna, an individual would meet their needs at some other house. They have two other individuals they think then could move into a, um, a supportive housing setting. Uh, what we would do is we would, uh, in, by incentivizing that, we would pay them um, uh, we would pay for the open slot. So as a slot, I hate to say that, the open position. So as the individual is transitioning out to the new site, we would still fund that provider as if that person was there just to make sure that the staffing stayed consistent. Um, and then as they go to the new place, they would then receive the rate of that place and then they would get an incentive rate, which is basically a double the rate. Uh, so they would get additional dollars and that money then is to be helped to be used in terms of uh, providing uh, trans to transition piece to it. So it may need additional supports, additional staffing to help them ease into the new new place. Um, and uh, if once the individual is uh, has uh, successfully been placed and they're there after 60 days, they then would receive a uh, a one time payment of about thirty three thousand um, dollars. So we've kind of made these incentives pretty generous um, to uh, encourage providers to do this, to help them and assist them as they start going down their journey to transform um uh less reliant on group homes and more reliant on supports that are um more individualized and in the community um and settings that 
Um, there still may be a group of individuals, but they'd be more in um, apartments and um, and whether that's with a roommate or not a roommate would be their per, their per choice. So that's kind of the, what the incentives would look like and the day is pretty similar to that as well. And I think you guys will get a copy of that. Um, so the two different pieces. Okay. All right, so we'll be sharing that with uh, the committee as well. Um, and so um, what I was thinking, um, and anyone can can jump in and kind of give their thoughts too on the matter, but the task is to, the current task now is to get um, this information out to um, the DDS staff. And so uh, Peter, if you, don't mind what you have um, as far as your notes, if you don't mind sending that over um, to me so that I have um, something to reference and we can share that as well and um, prepare some some sort of draft as how I'm, I'm hoping, you know, just like um, Peter said, you know, we and, and also Wayne, uh, we want to make sure that the information is concise. You know, we're not going to it's going to be uh, we're going to be putting it out as updates and not, you know, long and lengthy detailed uh, information, but we do have, I believe in the website, um, Peter, there are links that have information too as far as what's going on. So we will be adding those links there for folks to kind of get um, an update, a minimal update uh, uh, in each category, but we'll provide the links as well for them to get um, fuller details um, and access when they have that time to, to re research further if they'd like to um, by adding that there. So it's not to overwhelm people with all this information all at once. Um, and confuse people, but more um, we want the message is to keep them in the loop, to share information, make sure everyone is aware of the process. And also they're also informed um, as some families, parents and providers are also rece receiving this information and may um, contact them or ask questions um, so that they'll be able to also direct them to where this information can be found for more information or um, you know, inform themselves further if they have any uh, families or providers asking specific questions, right? They'll be able to know where to access this information. That's also one of the goals we were talking about um, later on or for more details. So um, we'll start there. And then what I'm thinking we're going to do is I'm going to, uh, we're going to email Joe and I, we'll email this to the committee so that you guys can see it yourself and maybe um, have an initial uh, draft and we can look at that and everyone can have their input on what their thoughts are as far as how it looks, the messaging, and we'll get that out um, timely as well. We're hoping in the meantime too, Joe sent a um, email out with the agenda with some links to the last couple of presentations that uh, for the incentive presentations that the individual and family committees have um, uh, you know, those those presentations were actually recorded, so it's nice that you can uh, go back. We can go back and watch it. And as Joe mentioned, if we have any questions, um, you know, to bring those back and we'll make sure that we can also uh, request that those presenters come and present to us to to help inform us on, you know, these different incentives. I think that'll be helpful. It'll be helpful for me. Um, so I think that that'll be that'll be a next thing on the agenda uh, for next time. And if we can get if if everyone is interested in that now, we can I can talk with Shannon from the individual family and um, uh, committee there and get the contact. She's actually already sending me those, um, but we can schedule that and see if we can have um, a presenters come if that works for everyone. I can go ahead and get that moving. Yes, OK, I'm getting some so, nods. So it, it's Marina German. Um, I think I'm struggling a little on a meta analysis level with, and maybe I need Wayne to repeat what you said in smaller words about the purpose <laughs> of, of what we are trying to accomplish, because it's, I love hearing the stuff that's going on that Peter outlined, but to the, how much of what we're talking about is about way to communicate the stuff that's going on at DDS to DDS, which is kind of what I thought we were here to focus on. And if that's true, then I think that's the key question I think we're here to answer, which is, 
of all the stuff that's happening that we're here talking about, what should be a memo? What should be an email? What should be a, I don't know what, you know, a giant video in the corner that looks like if you've seen the Hunger Games, the president's giant floating head speaking to the populace saying, this is what is happening now and you must all watch me tell you about it, you know, whatever. Like there's whatever the the, the mechanism is, how do you decide what needs to be said in what way? Because as you said, if, if someone had written a memo of what Peter just told us in the first 20 minutes, everyone's eyes would have glazed over and no one would have read it. So there must be a way to figure out what to say in what way. But I don't know which, is that what we are here to figure out or is it not? Yes, um, that's my understanding. <laughs> yeah, so if, if I could, if I can take a quick stab at that, um, I believe that working with the new consultant that's been hired, who's going to be working with our engagement committee, as well as other engagement committees, they're going to help us um, consolidate our communication efforts so that we are in lockstep with the other engagement committees. That's number one. Uh, number two, I think part of our communication strategy um, not completely has been contingent upon getting the draft incentives, but is partially that. So. Um, now that those have been shared, um, I think we can begin um, that part in earnest, um, you know, reviewing those incentives and how we communicate those to GDS staff. Um, that said, I'm sure that there is other, uh, other aspects of our communication strategy that I'll leave to either Princess or to Peter uh, to, to comment on, but I just wanted us to start off by saying that. Because you hear my confusion, right? We just heard 20 minutes of stuff that's happening and that's all I'm fascinated. I think that's great. All, I, I love hearing about it, but that's like attending a rack meeting is which I also do. And I know Don does as well. Here's stuff happening at DDS. Which is not the same as what is the mechanism that we should be using to talk about the stuff that's happening at DDS, which is the meta level above it that which is why I was struggling with. Wait, why are we what anyway? You, no, you, you I, get this is this is Peter Mason. I think that 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 distinction is a great distinction. Um, it's because uh, we need to know how to communicate. You know what's the format that's best for it, um, and what what's the information that's needed uh, to make sure that people. Uh, understand what's happening, and mm -hmm. then if they want to delve into it deeper, they can go X, Y, you know, here's, here's more information if you want to go into it deeper. So I think the how and the what is, I think what you're talking about is how do we do it and what is it we are, what is it we want to communicate and in what kind of fashion do we want to, yeah. I think that's, I, 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 I go ahead. And this is Dawn DiMatteo. I think, you know, it's a lot of information. It's a lot of good information, but like everyone else, you're getting, everyone's getting information thrown at them. So I think it needs to be simplified, you know, maybe like in bullet point, you, you got to keep their attention. Um, maybe like in, in bullet point type presentation to them versus, you know, a three page memo or something is, is the staff at DDS aware of the ARPA committees and what all the committees are doing and, and um, what's the purpose of each committee? Has that been um, shared I, with? I, I think this, we're, we've made assumptions that people do um, know that, but I don't think that everybody knows exactly what's happening. Uh, and, and so that, you know, that's, that's why one of my thinkings for this committee was, you know, is to have somebody looking at this. It's like, okay, how are we, what what needs to be communicated? Mm -hmm. And, you know, do we start from this to scratch and say, okay, you know, this is the ARPA bulletin for DDS staff. And here's all the different, here's, here's the beginning yeah. of it. And then something's going to get issued that, 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 and then, you know what is the what's the time period for that, and I, those that that thing of how the how piece to it. You know we don't have we right now we still don't have every DDS direct care staff does not have an email address. We're still working through that process. So mm -hmm. trying to get the information that 
we want them to know needs to get done almost through a third party now. It's like, OK, does it go to the supervisor and the supervisor is going to just put it up on a bulletin board or is it this? I mean, those those pieces of how we get this stuff out, I think is just as critical as to what we're actually saying. Exactly. And, uh, and, and I think, you know, that's what I was always envisioning that this committee would be doing is, OK, you know, uh, if we're going to if we're going to send something to the the pro to the direct care staff, do they need to know the ins and outs of the incentives? Probably not. But should they know that you know providers are being encouraged to do this, and why are they being encouraged to do this? You know, what's the what's the um, what's all this about? I think that's the kind of stuff they would need to know mm -hmm. versus what the case manager needs to know versus. Yeah. You know, even the business office, what does the business office need to know? Those, those different pieces, uh, we've never had anybody look at it in that kind of a format before. It's always been, all right, let's send the email. No, or let's send the, you know, the memo and hopefully everybody interprets it the same way. And it's not going to happen. This is John. It's not going to happen. It's it's going to be you have to look at your audience. I think we have to take it and break down who the audience is that we're communicating to, and it's going to be a different means of information that goes to each of those different parties. Right, right. I mean, it's basically it's the same message, but each each stakeholder is going to get a different component of that message exactly. for what they for what they you know what we think they need to know and still mm -hmm. have a place that if they want to delve it into more this is where you go to yeah right it's marina derman again I, I also think there's a difference between information there's like push and pull right there's stuff that everyone needs to know it's important enough that it needs to be pushed to everybody so you know there's a recall on the brakes of your car needs to be pushed to everybody so you know everyone's incentives are changing everyone needs to hear or the right stakeholders need to hear versus i need to change information and put it in a repository so people who want to look it up can go find it that's a whole different story and also is important but it's different from pushing stuff out that's the people who want to go find it need to have access to it and that's also worth thinking about carefully yeah right and 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 unfortunately we don't have the uh, communication consultant to assist us with putting this all together uh, too as well and so that's um, where we're at is we have to just collaborate with each other now to kind of figure out the best ways with the tools that we do have right now um, you know practically well, to put that out this is Peter Mesa and I think what the committee can start doing is what are the what what are the different um, what are the different stakeholders you know mm -hmm. it, it, how, how do you break DDS up yeah. You know, what would that look like? Mm -hmm. And who? so, you know, if you take a look at the incentives, it's like, OK, the case managers may need to know this. The 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 the, the business office may need to know that the uh, direct care may need to know this. Uh, the clinical staff may need to know that, you know, what what's the audience and how do you break that down? And then, you know, what is I think there should be a global message to everybody mm -hmm. you know this is this is what the uh, this is the initiative this is what we're doing and then how do you then keep that going into the different pieces i think the the first on demand the first piece to do is break down those those pieces break down the audience mm -hmm. and then like marina said you know know what needs to be pushed out and it has to be a consistent what we're pushing out probably across the board has to be consistent for instance, just an overview of what, you know, ARPA is doing and, and all this, just a, a quick overview. And then breaking down each of the, you know, whether you have four or five different audiences, like you say, the direct care workers, the supervisors, I think that's, we almost have to do like a flow chart type thing initially before we can break down to what's going to be 
communicated to each of these different audiences for like lack of better word. so like who who are we communicating to and have like an yeah. organizational chart where then so yes. we know we know you know which areas like who the communication is going to and then we decide well how much information do they need do to know? they need to What's know critical mm -hmm. for them? Yeah, and go from there. And, so, and that um, will be good for our, you know, that this is Pierre Mason. That will be good for when the you the consultant does come in. You you yes. you've broken this already down for them. Say, all right, so we've got this, 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 this. You know, this is what we need to do. Then you have, you know, the direction you can give them. All right, I've got this message now. We're thinking that this is what this is, and and so I think there is things to do before that consultant starts. Yes. Oh, yes. Um, because so. why it, it's Dawn DiMatteo, why waste their time on let's let's get one step ahead and be proactive and have that flow chart sort of done so that when they come in, you know, you're you're not they're not seeing DDS as in the providers as just one big group. I mean, we are we all work together, but that they see the flow chart, you know. I think that's probably a piece we should work on sooner than later so that we have a head start. So when we do get the consultants, we're ready to roll. Right. And I and think, you know, like looking at that. And, and maybe, look, oh, go ahead. I was just going to say, looking at the survey results, you know, kind of with kind of help in terms of some of that as well. Sorry, Marina. No, I was, I was just going to say, and in a similar vein, maybe some of the advanced work could also include um, I, I agree with with sort of coming up with who your segments are. Also, I think that maybe it's possible that certain types of information lend themselves to different types of delivery. And maybe there's some obvious ways to segment that also up front and say this kind of, you know, thing we do often lends itself well to an email for those who have email. This kind of thing lends itself well to a one page memo that gets stuck up in the coffee rooms. I don't know. This kind of thing lends itself well to the to Jordan's whatever it is, the Monday thing he does, yeah. the, you know, whatever those different whatever the, the media type or communications mechanisms that get used. Maybe we can start thinking about the ways in which, you know, just say the now we've all also you can segment the types of communications by the types of communication, you know, commun the types of communications by the types of communicates. And then so then you almost have a little matrix of who you're communicating with and the communication mm -hmm. um, types of and, and get a head start on that as well. Yeah, I think that's fantastic. And I, I want to see you as the in that television with the talking head. I want to see you up there, Marina. <laughs> Absolutely. I'll be up there, right, right up there. I, but, you know, I look, I don't think the Donald Sutherland face, I think I want to be like the great and glorious Oz in when I'm oh, like yeah. all green, just speaking to the munchkins and scaring them. <laughs> this is Wayne. Uh, I, I was actually picturing Peter's face up there, but it, it, either would work, I think, for sure. Um, what, what I do want to say, though, is, and I'm not sure if I'm repeating something that was said in another one of these meetings or something that I said somewhere else, but as I'm listening to this conversation, I am hearing that we are looking to identify the who, the what, and the how, but I think the when is also really important as well, yes. given that all of these are in different stages. Um, and so some, like, you know, the, the, um, the case management, care management system, that's like a three year project to start having a steady drum roll of information about that now is not the appropriate timing. Um, so, you know, we, we should look at each of these uh, and think about the when as well. I, I love the idea of a matrix to help to try to identify some of this who, what, where, when, why, how, all of those five W's and the H uh, I think are super important. This well, this is, I think that's a great idea. I think, you know, the timing of it, I think to give them a heads up that DDS is looking at it, you know, right. uh, and, and which is fine. I think, you know, the NCI survey, you know, when is that going to start so that people know that, you know, that's going to be coming out so people should see what's happening. And uh, yeah, no, I think the I think the timing is a big piece of this as well. Hi, uh, Princess here. I was just going to uh, mention that um, 
to start because you know seeing as though timing is a, a critical factor we do want to get some communication out as to you know what's been happening now um and, and just just keeping the focus on you know the fact that you know we haven't really communicated anything yet uh, so we want to get some information out now to really kind of think about what's important to talk about now with ARPA um, having to do with the uh, transformational the, the incentives and kind of what the committees have been um, up to, what progress has been going on there. Um, maybe thinking about what we want to put out now um, or within the next week or, you know, or so, uh, what we want to put out. And in the meantime, getting those notes from Peter so that we can look at it visually, um, mm -hmm. what is actually, what the updates are and choose from there based on, you know, timing, what's important, what needs to be discussed now or kind of put out there to, to folks now and go from there. Cause we, you know, you, I, I work best from a visual. Um, so I kind of need to know what what's happening. Okay, just like we just learned the case manager project is happening in the next three years. It's probably not critical, but it's something case managers would be excited about and they would want to know that like, this is happening, this is coming along. Here's a little blurb about it, but we'll keep you posted as things move closer to, you know, things come into more, more of a fruition. But as far as what's happening now, what we need to move on now, these are the things that we want to make sure we that are coming out. One of the things that I was thinking about as we were talking about roles and flow charts and things like that is maybe an organizational chart, maybe to see kind of who's who uh, within the agency to know that we're not missing anyone. Um, that might need to know certain things. And then uh, also we can look at that to see uh, what types of access do those folks have. We know direct care workers all don't have email, but what types of access do those uh, individuals have? And, and we can see who they are, what their roles are, understand their roles and understand what types of information that they might need, right? Understanding who the audience is and how they play a role in this uh, too as well is important. So Peter, do you know if we would, if we have a, um, a current organizational chart that we can work from? Oh, I don't know. Um, that's that's probably like a Katie. OK, Katie, Brown. Katie question. Yeah. I'll check in with Katie on that. I'm a retiree that now. I don't know. <laughs> I'm a retiree <laughs> now. I don't know all that stuff. OK, all right. So I'll check in with with uh, Katie on that. I think that will be helpful to us to kind of have that visual of the, the breakout of who the audience is internally and uh, then Peter you'll send us the uh, the notes so we'll have that to look at to see what the information is that we have and what the timing is for what um, we have to send out uh, and also we were we were we were informed on uh, some of the stakeholders from based on the survey that we um, uh, did earlier as far as what communication resources we have uh, email for the mo for the majority of the folks that uh, like case managers, um, resource managers, uh, even providers, um, you know, communicate mostly through email. Uh, some families do. You know, we want to make sure that we have um, a good understanding of what uh, folks have for, for access. I want to be able to um, maybe touch base with some of the. Uh, the supervisors too to, to kind of find out and be more informed on how they currently get information to their uh, worker staff uh, um, right now. So we have some idea on, you know, how that happens. Is it consistent? Is it working for you and all that kind of stuff too? So we right now we really don't have any idea how that's working. Um, from what I do know, uh, there there are cork boards just like you were mentioning, Don. Uh, there are information boards where people can you know read and hear about initiatives uh, in the break room and different places like that. Supervisors do share information um, with their staff to PSs. There are sometimes they do read and signs as well when an initiative comes out or there's something that needs to be communicated um, as well. Or the the commissioners um, Friday messages are printed out for folks um, as well. But we want to have a really good idea of what's what they're actually doing. Um, as far as getting communication out um, to those and we haven't even I don't even know how we can even find out from from staff as far as what what they think um, would be helpful for them um, as well so I don't know if you think that would be beneficial for us to know too as well um, but as for as far as staying focused and making sure that we get some information out there I think that 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 was one of the things that we were talking about uh, Peter too that we wanted to make sure to get some information out there so folks can actually know what's happening the last communication that we 
that not the last, but the last major communication we did receive from the department about ARPA, um, just an overview, kind of what's it about, um, uh, introducing the committees and some of the tasks and goals um, with that was in June and August. Um, and there were links to the DDS website where they can access information. That's the ones that were communicated in uh, my, know my, my division um, meetings as well. So we're informed about ARPA, that it's a, it exists, that there's committees going on. Folks are aware of it too also because of the survey. Um, but I don't know how much further um, people are informed as far as the workers. I don't think they're informed. So we want to get something out um, soon. Um, how would it be good? Would it be okay for us to email? I don't know if we would need to have another meeting. Um, our next meeting um, on listed on the agenda is November 19th um, at 11 o'clock. We've been keeping it to Wednesdays. Uh, we established, I think, all the way through December. So we'll also be talking again about um, you know uh, setting up, scheduling our meetings beyond uh, December into the next year. So the 19th is a Saturday. Yeah, it's actually oh, I, mean, the I meant the 16th. I'm sorry, not the 19th, the 16th. <laughs> so that's an edit. It, it um, still says that on the website, just uh, for whatever it's worth. <laughs> okay, well, well, we're, we're not going to meet on a Saturday, I promise. <laughs> Maybe you'll be there. I won't be there. I won't be there. Um, so anyway, so we'll update that. Thank you uh, for letting us know. We'll update that. Um, and we'll be in touch uh, with the committee through email to kind of keep us posted, keep us updated with um, getting some of these um, follow ups um, to everybody. That's the organizational chart. That is the so as you know, as far as some of the advanced work that we was talking, we were talking about um, who the um, identifying who the audience uh, is that we're speaking to and kind of uh, the roles and um, the roles chart and maybe seeing if I can probably even um, add in their kind of what their roles are and pertaining to kind of you know how they play a role in this whole transformational thing um, here too so that kind of helps um, so i'll do that and then we're also following up with the um, incentive um, day and res incentives drafts so we can take a look at that um, as well i'll send that out to you guys when i receive that and what else did we have to do is there anything else that i missed joe i know you were taking minutes yeah, so I was just thinking about topics for future for future meetings. Um, uh, the only thing I could think of is if uh, anyone has um, any additional ideas that might not have been mentioned yet. This is Wayne. I, I think as far as a topic and act, an activity, and and forgive me if I if we're already doing this, but is to actually in one of our next meetings, like start working on creating those matrices that we were talking about um, and start actually doing it. I mean, we could use a Teams whiteboard. We could uh, create and advance a, a, an Excel grid that helps to um, look at the initiatives and across the top have who, what, how, where, why, right? And, and start plugging in some information, even if it's just a rough draft sketch. Good idea. Um, Shannon McCormick, the Down Syndrome Association of Connecticut. Um, I just wanted to mention, I think probably the content calendar in communications lingo, and probably I'm guessing the communication consultant, that's one of the recommendations I'll make. Um, I kind of look around and, and see if I can find some examples of that for folks. It, it may save time in trying to order things. Um, you know, uh, order it and structure thing and so forth on the whiteboard if you'd like. This is Peter Mason. Shannon, you kind of went in and out at the beginning. Can you just start uh, the, just the, the first part you were talking about? Okay. I apologize. I'm, I have COVID. My voice is going in and out. Oh, no. Um, <laughs> getting better slowly. Um, so my name is Shannon McCoy. With the Down Syndrome Association of Connecticut, I think the matrix that you're talking about is called a communications. Um, and it, um, it it's basically a matrix that can be as simple or as complex as organization needs. And you identify all the channels. You, and I, you lay where things need to happen. And at one point in the calendar, they can be calendar. They can be a three-year calendar. Um, if you would like, I can find some, they may help you with that whiteboarding. They may eliminate some steps for you if you'd like. 
Awesome. That'd be great. Okay. Thank you so Thank much. Thank you. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, and, and this is Princess here, DDS. And, and in the meantime, too, I'll, uh, Joe and I will be collaborating with um, Kevin Bronson, our communications director, uh, to help also with any type of guidance, too, that he can give us um, in, as far as communications go, too, as well. Um, use the expertise that we have. Uh, here, so I'm so glad that we have uh, on our committee so many people who have expertise in this area. Uh, for sure, I'm really, I really feel great about it. So thank you all so much. I think that you know, um, I'm certainly struggling with the with the who, what, where, and who and when as well. Uh, and I'm 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 focused on the timeline uh, too as well, and just uh, making sure that you know. And I think that's part of my role too is to make sure that we actively get it done. But um, but another part of the role, and I think everybody here is on the same page too, is to make sure we're actually informed with what we what we have, right? So that's the next thing. So there's this things are going to be moving pretty fast. It's going to be a lot of information coming. Um, you know, uh, we're going to be discussing um, with the group too as well. And I just really wanted to let you guys all know that I do appreciate everyone really making it to the meetings and you know providing such really good input and and really playing an active role in moving this thing along and. Uh, you know, keeping each other up with this because it's a it's a huge task, but it's very very important. Um, and so, uh, you know, certainly also too in between meetings, keep in touch with um, the rest of us as well. If you have any ideas and feedback or anything to to add that would help uh, help the task, that would be helpful. I really appreciate um, uh, anything that you guys have to offer for sure. Um, and and let us know too if if we're missing anything or we're missing the mark uh, for sure. Please do. Um, and I think we, we've gone over, so I don't want to keep you guys um, much longer. I think we went through the agenda. I feel like we, we're all on the same page. There's some things that need to be done in the meantime, so you will be hearing from Joe and I um, in that time to follow up. Um, if anybody doesn't have any uh, other questions, sorry, Joe just sent something uh, to add. I think we might be able to. Um, to entertain a motion. Yeah, it can, uh, we'll entertain a motion to adjourn if no one has anything else. My motion. <laughs> Wayne seconds. Awesome. Thank you, Peter and Wayne. Uh, the meeting is adjourned at 1218 PM. Um, right. Thank you all so much. And uh, Princess and I will be in touch. Um, until then, we will see you on Wednesday, November 16th. Uh, we'll have that updated on the website. I just sent that request now. So thank Great. you, everybody. Greatly Thank appreciate you. it. Thank you Thanks, all. Peter. We appreciate bye. you today. Okay, bye. Bye. Bye, everyone.